Hi, welcome to FTW Movie Recap. Today, I am going to explain an American action thriller film released in 2023 called Plane. The beginning of the film shows Captain Bertie Torrance, Gerard Butler, rushing through the Singapore airport as he is running late for his flight. He is trying to get through security to board the plane when he receives a call from his daughter Daniela, Haley Hecking, just as he is about to fly into Honolulu to spend the holiday with her. He nevertheless affirms his commitment to being present and conveys his wish for minimal delays. Thankfully, he arrives at his aircraft in time and finds out from his co-pilot, Samuel Deli, that the flight officer has not yet paid a visit. Deli then introduces Torrance to the adverse weather conditions they would encounter en route, and the two pilots begin to get to know one another. The flight officer walks in as they are conversing and tells them that Trailblazer 119, their plane, would take off for Tokyo with 14 people on board. Torrance then expresses his fear for the weather and offers a different flying route that helps escape the weather. The flight officer, however, interrupts him and warns that using the alternate route would add more time because the weather might clear by the time they arrive. The two pilots simply agreed, unable to object. Torrance is then informed that he is required in the jetway by a flight attendant who joins the deck and introduces herself as Bonnie. He then proceeds to the jetway, where he is confronted by law enforcement agents who are holding a person in handcuffs. He is being extradited on homicide-related charges, and his name is Louis Gaspar. Torrance tells the officer to stay away from the passengers because he is worried that having a handcuffed felon around will make them uncomfortable. Knight, the officer, accepts and settles into a seat with Gaspar in the tail of the aircraft. Torrance shakes off his unease as he meets Maria and Isabella, two other flight attendants. He is familiar with Isabella. There are many different types of people on board, including Sinclair, an irritable businessman, and an annoying couple who gripe about the plane's condition. In an effort to reassure them of their safety, Torrance tells them the plane is in good condition. Another set of travelers included Bree, a social media celebrity, and Katie, who traveled with them. They appear to be the initial occupants of the seat that Gaspar and Knight had occupied. They are so impressed with them that they follow Maria's advice to select a different seat and attempt to take a photo of Gaspar to document their experience. When Gaspar sees it, he immediately tells them not to. Once everyone is seated and buckled up, Torrance gives a briefing over the intercom, cracks a joke fit for Southwest Airlines, and then the plane takes off. The pilots converse with one other about their families as the flight attendants care to the passengers. They encounter the storm they had anticipated encountering, though, and things begin to change. Everyone is told to buckle up by Torrance, who also calls air traffic control to let them know about the problem but gets no answer. They enter the storm more fully as they move forward. The entire plane is suddenly shaken by a lightning strike, which also causes the passengers to become terrified. When Torrance enters the cabin to try to calm the agitated passengers, he discovers a situation where the luggage that had fallen victim to the hit is now strewn across the floor. It was only the weather, he says while assisting the attendants in retrieving them. Torrance dismisses Sinclair's criticism of him for not flying the jet correctly and orders the flight attendants to prevent anyone from removing their seatbelts. Sadly, another strike to the plane causes Torrance to lose his equilibrium and bang his head, causing it to bleed. He makes it to the deck and assumes control of the flight after doing his best. The pilots work as hard as they can to find a signal despite the fact that all power and communication is shut off and that there is a heavy downpour coming. They make every effort, yet there is no apparent answer. They decide on the spot to land the jet because they are aware that the battery won't last more than a few minutes. The electrical malfunction is announced to the entire aircraft by Bonnie, who admonishes everyone to buckle up and remain seated at all times. The pilots strive to discover methods to land while keeping an eye on the Euro, while the flight attendants work hard to keep everyone on board safe. Officer Knight's phone then slips out of his hands and lays on the floor. The staff members are alarmed and keep warning him not to pick it up, but he chooses to ignore them. 
As an attendant, Isabella is compelled to attempt to save him, but another attack causes the plane to wobble and immediately shoots them off, killing them on the spot. After seeing what happened to the policeman, everyone is terrified and instructed by Bonnie to remain seated at all times. Finally, the pilots in the cockpit locate a viable landing area, but they barely have three minutes until the engines shut down. They made every attempt to fall while the clock was ticking over their heads. When the aircraft is ready to crash, Torin spots a road and steers it in that direction. The skipper makes a successful landing despite several challenges and the plane's blades slicing into the woodland trees. Everyone is relieved to be on solid ground and realizes that they might be on an island in the Philippines. The flight attendants ask the passengers to exit the aircraft right away because it hasn't yet stabilized. Delhi exits the aircraft independently first through the emergency exit, then all the other occupants. Torrance calls Bonnie to go as she is inspecting the dead's remains. Everyone is safely off the plane by morning, and they all feel relieved. In the following scene, Bonnie asks Torrance about Gaspar and gives him the handcuffs keys that she discovered while helping people off the plane. When Torrance and Deli look at the map to identify where they might have landed, they discover that it is Holo Island. Deli becomes cold when he hears the name. He tells Torrance that the island is governed by well-armed anti-militias who have a history of murder and robbery. Torrance chooses to keep it a secret from the other passengers so as not to incite fear. As an alternative, he informs them that they might have arrived in the Philippines and that they should try to find a means to request assistance. Then he assists them in erecting a tent outside. Torrance responds that staying inside the jet was a big no given the power outage and the heat when Sinclair, being the man he is, protests that they stay inside the aircraft. After that, Torrance and Deli try to turn on the electricity again but are unsuccessful. Torrance explains his plan and releases Gaspar after warning the other passengers that it would take some time for help to arrive. Later, the two left to seek assistance. Scarsdale uses all of his connections to assist the individuals given the scanned information that they may be in the Philippines. In the end, the rescue operation involves using mercenary black ops. Torrance probes Gaspar's motivations while moving deeper into the jungle after discovering a pocket knife among his possessions. However, he receives no information from an enigmatic Gaspar. The leader of the anti-militia, June Mar, is then introduced. One of the villagers tells him that a jet has landed. Additionally, he informs him that it fell close to the mines. Junmar draws the conclusion that the army is unlikely because his spies did not provide him with any such information. However, Torrance is now on his own after Gaspar abandoned the fight in the middle of it. After a few circuits are fixed, he arrives at a warehouse where he may place a call. He contacts the airlines and informs them of the entire issue, but the person on the other end of the line doesn't fully comprehend him before the conversation is disconnected. Then Torrance phones Daniela, who is already feeling ill with worry. She picks things up quickly and absorbs everything. She is then instructed by him to alert the airlines that they were on Holo Island. He suddenly comes under attack from behind. He makes every effort to get away, but Torrance is eventually able to take the attacker down after a protracted struggle. He prepares his gun as soon as he hears gunfire. He encounters Gaspar as footsteps draw near, and the man gives him a weapon. Torrance notices a number of dead bodies of people who Gaspar killed as they are traveling below. When they discover a camera with a video, they discover that foreigners had already been robbed there before them. The two hurry to the passengers in the robber's van out of concern that they may suffer the same fate. The sound of the cars makes the passengers jump to their feet with joy, but the gunfire soon make them realize that the rescue squad they had hoped for is not there. In the midst of the bandits stealing the passengers, Torrance and Gaspar arrive there just in time. The passenger list is taken from Bonnie under duress, and they ask for Torrance, but no one identifies him. A girl attempts to run away at that precise moment but is fatally shot. She begs for help 
but her partner too is brutally murdered. The passengers are then escorted out in terror. Gaspar prevents Torrance from interfering and assisting them because he believes it would be unwise for the captain to go up against the criminals. Two of Junmer's men are instructed to seize anything from the travelers that could be used as payment. Then Gaspar and Torrance kidnap him and coerce him into providing information. They eventually learn that they are going to the village of Dangelit but are unable to learn more. After learning that Delhi managed to fix the eclectic system, Torrance returns inside the aircraft, finds the settlement on a map, and leaves a note for the rescue crew. As a result, after verifying the facts with Daniela, Scarsdale employs the mercenary black operations to travel to the island back at the headquarters. While the passengers are being kept hostage, Torrance and Gaspar arrive in the settlement. They eventually come across the remaining passengers after taking out the robbers one by one. Thankfully, with just a man keeping watch over them, the pair manage to set them free and transport them to a bus. Torrance risks his life by going to the robbers to divert their attention because escape would only alert the other bandits. He bows to the chief and presents a confused expression. He gets hit as a result of the action. The designated crew opens fire on the robbers at that precise moment, killing many of them in the process. Soon, they and Torrance get at the bus in safety. Infuriated by the circumstance, Junmar issues the order for his remaining men to board the aircraft. As soon as they get to the jet, Torrance pleads with everyone to board it because it is their only means of escape. Everyone complies. In order to buy some time while he makes a patch, Torrance asks the rescue crew for assistance. Junmar then shows up and attacks, inflicting damage on one of the travelers. Both sides engage each other in a heavy exchange of gunfire in an effort to outnumber one another. Eventually, Torrance must board the aircraft. He makes a rush while everyone else supports him, and despite being shot in one of his legs, he enters. He informs the administration that he will be piloting the aircraft, an idea that Scarsdale favors but Hampton rejects. Shellback and Gaspar are still engaged in combat outside the aircraft as the pilots and the remaining crew do everything they can inside. While trying to recoil his gun, Gaspar discovers the money bag the mercenaries are in possession of. Everyone gets in the car except Gaspar as they prepare to go. Shellback calmly observes Gaspar as he walks away with the bag of cash. Junmar and one of his guys are still making every effort to halt them in the meantime. When Junmar's man prepares to hit the plane with an RGF, Gaspar shoots him dead just in time to save the aircraft. Junmar has his automobile parked in front of the jet, which he believes will stop it, and is prepared to shoot it. Torrance, who doesn't intend to comply, takes off the plane straight past them. They ultimately connect with air traffic thanks to the rescue crew, and with the help of that, they are able to locate an airfield that is just about reachable using the plane's remaining capacity. Torrance safely lands the aircraft in an area free of assailants this time. The passengers applaud him as they congratulate him. All passengers exit the aircraft at last. As Torrance exits the aircraft after them and is hailed as a hero for saving numerous lives, the film comes to a close.